This is round three, spell books against Girgia. I'm playing actually against Paul Levitin, who is a pretty popular player from back in the day. So I'm debating whether or not I should play my High Priestess of Prophecy. Um, I know I have, I had, I started with four spell books in hand. I want to play Spellbook Star Hall as soon as, as soon as possible in order to get the boosts for my monsters and Spellbook Secrets and Spellbook Magician, Spellbook Magician, search for a spellbook, go for Master to fill up my graveyard. I'm thinking about a, a future Reaper play to search the deck for another spellbook and I decided to go against the High Priest of Prophecy play only because I'm not sure what my opponent is playing and I don't want it sitting out there um, right now. And there we go. So I, I have my tower set up play, two spell books in grave, tower will return one of them. But all in all, I'm, I feel pretty good about this. This is a very good starting hand. Reaper can be very useful as long as I can get the four spell books to grave. And uh, I can also search. Uh, my So Paul Levitin normal summons the Girgi armor. And sets three black back row without turning it face down. Which is a very, very interesting play. Oh, uh, okay. So I thought I could get the tower off. My opponent changed Mystical Space Typhoon. So tower is not a cost to return from the grave. So I have three spell books in grave. Uh, I don't have another spell book. Ugh, that kind of hurts. But it's not too bad. I still have the spell book of life. My opponent lost 2,000 life points. <laughs> Special summon attack. Oh, solemn judgment. So it's a cost to reveal and to banish a spell book. I have 7,700 life points. My opponent has 3,000. He just solemn judgment and solemn warning me. Solemn judgment and solemn warning to me. Damn. So he turns Gigi armor face down, flips it face up. No wonder he summoned it in attack mode. Uh, he didn't want to risk. I guess playing against something that would pop it. Oh my god. Triple Girgi Accelerator. That means he can go for double Girgigant and just be in a very advantageous position with um, having a bunch of machines in his hand. So that, that means I'm definitely going to see a Fortress next turn, if not this turn. Oh man. Yeah. So I'm definitely seeing the fortress this turn. He searched for gear frame, gear frame. Normal summon one of the gear frame. Oh, come on. He has the limiter removal too? So solemn judgment, solemn warning, and limiter removal with triple gear gear accelerator and a gear gear armor. That's crazy. That that was a nutty hand. Totally decimated there. Uh, so I'm debating on the soul drains. I'm definitely going to go for the trap stuns because that was despicable that he had um, <laughs> Solemn Warning and Solemn Judgment against me that turn. Uh, so since I put in the defigures, I need to side out the Apprentice Magicians. I like to side out the dualities. I'm taking out the Star Hall because that didn't really do anything. And uh, one Temperance of Prophecy. But damn, that was way too nutty a hand nothing I could have done against that hand so this time I start out uh, much better two traps two spell books a fader and a storm what I uh, so that's most likely a Girgi armor who knows what the traps are maybe I should have held off on the storm I don't have any spell books to do anything with right now. I need a spellcaster monster at the very least. So he MSTs my bottomless. Oh, double MST. Also MSTs my solemn judgment. All right, so I definitely should have just waited a turn and uh, not set anything and just use my heavy storm. Oh, what is that? What is that? 
So, Gear Gear Armor, search for Gear Gear Accelerator. Normal Summon Gear Frame, search for Fortress. At least I have the Battle Fader this time to stop any uh, OTK, well, stop any damage at this point. Another Gear Gear Accelerator. Oh man, that means he's going for the double gear gigant again. <laughs> oh, such a good hand, Paul Levitin. <laughs> so double gear gigant, double search. Uh, so he searches for gear frame and gear gear accelerator. Dude, this sucks. And uh, just in case he has the limiter removal, I'd rather summon the battle fader now. Oh, I got my spellbook magician of prophecy. Use this effect. <laughs> Definitely gonna go for spellbook of secrets. Secrets into master. And then uh, a double power play. So, you know, it's, it's not too bad. Not the worst thing that could have happened. Now I'm going to search for the tower. And maybe a secret. Yeah, that would actually be best. Um, I have a good amount of... Yep, yeah, I want to banish the gear you got now. That way he can't get its effect off next turn and have way too much advantage. I'm going to do Eternity for Master so that I can return it with Tower next turn. <laughs> so the only thing that could have been better is if I had a Priestess. If I had had a Priestess in hand earlier. So I know my opponent has a Girgi Accelerator in hand with a gear frame and a fortress. So that's three of the five cards that my opponent has. The other two, I have no idea what they could be. Oh, now there's another fortress and that hurts. So I take 2000, lose my battle fader and my opponent has a set. So his last hand, card in hand is a gear gear accelerator. Tower effect. Oh, second master. Not what I needed. A priestess would have been so much better. Now I can do double power again. So just make sure my opponent doesn't have a response. Solemn judgment. Oh, damn, that hurts. Ah, uh, he's solemn judgment. My spellbook magician of prophecy, and I'm sitting here with an eternity and double master in hand. Not cards I want to be sitting with, especially without a monster. Uh, I'll be able to play the eternity later, but. Normal summon Girgi armor. Okay, so no, no OTK craziness. Oh, I'm at 600 life points. Whew. So it seems he doesn't have the cowboy. Tower effect. So at first I top decked into High Priestess, which is great. Uh, trap stun is uh, much too late to do anything for me. Especially summon the High Priestess. What do I want to do? Yeah, add the power back to hand. <laughs> Banish Spellbook of Secrets to hit the face down. I'm going to go for power. So I hit his face down only because I didn't want him to search. Go for power. Put it at 35. Spellbook of Fate. Knock that out.
And the trap stun is set. So trap stun won't do anything. Oh, gear frame into machina. Damn. And I so I definitely need to take those trap stuns out of my side deck. They don't do anything. And I lose. If only I had something to capitalize that extra 400 life points. GG Paul Levitin. So watching this play over, I drew into High Priestess Prophecy, Return Spell Book of Fate. I have two Master in hand, High Priestess Prophecy and a Trap Stun. So I special summon my High Priestess. And now I realize, looking back at this, that I misplayed here. Um, I did find with playing Spellbook Attorney into power. That was perfect. And uh, I use High's effect, High Priestess's effect, to pop the face down Gear Gear armor. Perfect. My major problem, though, is when I use Spellbook of the Master to copy Spellbook of Secrets, I should have grabbed that last Spellbook Magician of Prophecy from my deck. If I had grabbed the last Spellbook Magician of Prophecy, I could have normal summoned it, go into Spellbook of Fate, and um, use Spellbook of Fate, banish the Girgi armor. After banishing the Girgi, uh, the Machina Fortress, I mean, banish the Machina Fortress, attack directly for 4,000 total, and at least I would have made it to game three. Oh well, in retrospect, hindsight is always 2020. This is why you, uh, I need more practice with the Prophecy deck. It still has a lot of great plays. It's a, just a great deck in general, and as long as you draw decently, you have definitely a strong chance of beating your opponent and winning. It's not a tier 1 deck because it doesn't have the super searchability, the super plays, and it, it can be inconsistent with uh, very dead draws, especially if you don't get the Spellbook Magician of Prophecy or the Secrets. And you have to get Priestess in order to win. It's almost impossible to win without Priestess. So that's uh, round three. I'm X1.